Hi, I'm Kelly at Book and Paper Arts, and today I am going to show how to alter a tin by adding faux rust to the cover. I love boxes. I love tins. They are great ways to make altered art, and I will be showing these pieces in a mo. They're just straight up also good ways to organize things. Here's one that's full of mother of pearl buttons. And here's one that's just got some bibs and bobs that live in the studio and are always just not where I can find them. They're also really charming ways to send presents. You could put a little, some jewelry in there or even just a note and a piece of candy. And it's a great, charming way to send some happy, happy presents that doesn't, that, that does not cost very much. Here I have turned them into mixed media pieces, altered tins. This is using an Altoid tin. And here's the, the faux rust that I've then embellished. On the inside, I added an old fragment of a, a, an old letter from 1902, a cotton doily, and then this is... Um, a tin type from the 1860s. And it's just meant to kind of sit on a shelf or a cupboard like this. This is a piece I finished this week and it is a portable pocket shrine. Inside is a plaque of uh, the Immaculate Conception and the little Bernadette from Lourdes. Over here is an 19th century holy card, uh, a little key. This is a little bracelet with uh, roses that symbolize lords. And on the cover, I have again got the rust, mother of pearl buttons, and this is a distressed pouch, a poche, that is meant to hold rosaries. And what I put inside instead, this is called a dizaine. And dizaine is the French word for 10-ish, 10 more or less. And uh, instead of having five sets of 10 beads, it's got one decade, that's 10 beads, plus these metals. And so it goes in there. I am fascinated by shrines. If back in the day, way back in the day, from around the 12th century to the medieval era, if you were making a pilgrimage and you were wealthy, you would uh, often have your own portable shrine because the, the pilgrimage would take weeks or months. And this way you could use this for your prayers or devotions. I'm not Catholic. I just thought I love old French antiques and they are often in the Catholic iconography. Also, they're kind of an homage to that iconography because for hundreds of years, all art in the Western world had a religious theme, music, sculpture, painting. It was the rule. You had to. And so they used that to interpret lots of different stories, sometimes sneaky storytelling. But anyway, that is the visual language that they used. And so when I used that visual language in my art journal pages or altered books or altered shrines, that's my homage to that. This piece is for sale and the link to it is in uh, the text below the video. Now let's go alter a tin. And here's what you're going to need for this project. A tin. Altoid tins are ideal. Wood glue. This is by Gorilla, Gorilla Glue. It does need to be wood glue though. That's the magic ingredient. 
You can get this at any DIY or hardware store and also in big box stores that have DIY sections. Finally, you need a blowtorch. This is a, a miniature torch and it's primarily for cooking, such as uh, burning the caramel on a creme brulee. So it's pretty small. You can get them in kitchen stores, DIY stores, and I got mine online on eBay. They are not very expensive and I use it more than I thought I would. Uh, let's see, it runs on propane. Which brings me to the next thing you need, which is common sense. Please, 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 if you're gonna try this project, make sure that you do it in a well-ventilated area, propane, and that nothing flammable is around you. I'm actually using, I'm doing this on top of a, a, a very heavy cookie tin that I've turned upside down. I usually do it outside away from stuff, but today we have a gale again with 50 mile an hour winds. So I will not be doing that. Instead, it's cookie sheet time. So please be careful. You want to put a thin layer of the wood glue on top of the tin. And I'm using a brush to make it into a nice even layer. Don't make it too gloppy. I'm using a cheap brush that I got in the children's section of the stationery store. So don't use your good brushes for this. You will be sorry. It may, uh, the glue may repel in places. Don't worry about it because we're going to be adding several layers and each one will help the glue uh, get a little bit more tooth. Now, taking the torch, you want to you want to go over it lightly, not too close, because the idea is you want the wood glue to blister, not cook or burn, but to blister. So experiment a little bit and find the right place. Again, remembering we're going to be adding lots of coats. So... And you can see that what's happening now is that it is beginning to blister. and turn a caramel color. And the reason you don't want it too gloppy is because then the glue underneath will stay wet rather than blistering. And I don't think that's good. I'm gonna let this cool for a moment, then add another layer, and maybe three or four more after that. This is after three layers. At this point, I want to stop and actually look a little bit more closely at any places that need filling in. I can still see the raised lettering here. That could be a look, but I think I'm going to go ahead and cover that up with a little bit more, but maybe not so much over here. It's building up nicely. You also may want to do the sides. That's just a personal choice. If you do, just be careful that you don't get the glue in between here or you will start to glue the, the box, the tin, to itself. I know, I found out the hard way. So again, just go all around, add a couple of different layers. It's going to take a little time to build up the layers, but then you will have this beautiful look that goes all the way around like that. This is pretty much finished. I just wanted to show that you can, uh, if you wanna 
add a little drama. You can go in, you know, I said don't cook it, but you can a little bit here and there. You want to just bounce it so that you're getting not just a blister, but more of a dark brown coffee color. Uh, I don't like to go all the way around with that color, but that, you know, bopping it in here and there, that coffee color, that deeper brown is going to give it layer and texture. Like that. From here, you can add, as I showed earlier, some little buttons, uh, some little hardware. I think this is Tim Holtz, but it's, it's something like that. Just look around and see what you've got and make your cover pretty. Now that you've finished the top, you may want to cover the bottom. And I like to do that with something contrasting, such as some paper like this. You can use anything that you fancy. Wrapping paper is pretty. I like to use vintage text because that's my style. So you just want to take the paper that you've chosen, draw all the way around it, blah, 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 and make a template. Then you can cut it out to the inside of the lines and glue it down using some PVA or gel medium, which is what I use. If you like vintage paper and old text, please subscribe to my online newsletter. It comes out monthly, and every month I have free high-res scans of vintage paper ephemera. I have a newsletter coming out this coming Sunday. And in this Sunday's edition, it's going to have scans of this old high German text that I got in Switzerland. It's from 1912 of some Welsh text. This is from 1848, and it looks really fun and funky. And then this French dictionary page from 1842, as well as a scan of this math table. Numbers and tables look so cool in altered art and collage and journal arts and what you will. So to get these this coming Sunday, just subscribe to my newsletter. The link is in the text below. If this video is coming to you from the future, uh, just send me a message and I'll get you the link to these. If you would like to buy some old paper, I do sell originals with other French ephemera. They're sold as bundles. And if you're curious to see what those look like, there's a link below this video as well. Any questions or feedback, please let me know in the comments. And until next week, happy making.